Hello, so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about how to multiply a polynomial by a monomial, right? So as we learned about in the last lesson, right, a monomial specifically is just like one term, right? It's just some, some collection of numbers and variables, sometimes with exponents, right? It's just one little chunk. A polynomial, however, can have more than one chunk, right? So let's just take a look, right? It's gonna basically just be like fancy distributive property. We got this little chunk up at the top here where we're gonna multiply monomials by other monomials. And it's not gonna be as bad as you might think, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the pieces that go together and multiply those together, right? I know that sounds like, oh, really? That's it? Yeah. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm taking a look at this nine, for example. And I'm saying like, all right, I'm then multiplying with that other monomial and that other set of parentheses. What seems like you could multiply with nine? If you said eight, then you'd be absolutely right, right? So nine and eight seem like they would multiply together. Right? When I do that out, nine times eight, oops, let's make this a little smaller. Nine times eight is 72, right? Then let's move on to the next part, right? We've got some A's that seem like they could multiply together, right? You can do eight to the fourth times eight to the third, right? And this is where our exponent laws come in from the last unit. If I have four A's in the first part and three A's in the second, then all together I'm gonna to have seven A's that are all multiplying together. Right. Last but not least, we've got these B's, B to the fifth, and then another one over in that right side. B to the fifth times another B would give us six of those in total. All right. So again, we took nine times eight and got that 72, those went together. These A's went together to give us A to the seventh, and those B's multiplied together to give us B to the sixth. And that's all we're doing. All right. What I'd like you to do is actually pause here, try out that next one. It's not going to be too bad, I promise. So if we give that a go, all right, we got 5 and 7 that match up and go together. We got x squared and x to the 5th that go, then k to the 4th, and another k. All right, so what I'm going to do here is 5 times 7. Right, that stuff in red is going to give, or uh, <laughs> stuff in yellow is going to give me 35 there. All right, then up Next, I've got the x's. x squared means I've got two of them there, times another five. It's gonna give me x to the seventh in the middle. And then last but not least, I gotta multiply those k's. If I had four in that first set of parentheses times a fifth one, then that's exactly what I'll have is k to the fifth. Right? So that's at its base. Really all we're doing here, right, is we're taking the pieces that go together and multiplying them together. Some of these down here look a little bit nastier, right? When you're multiplying a polynomial by a monomial on the outside, right? Another term for this is expanding, right? You might see a problem that says expand this expression, right? Basically, again, all that means is that we're just going to do our distributive property with it. So I'm going to try my best to color code this at least a little bit to help out at first. So that first error that I just drew, 3 times x squared. When I do three times x squared, you know, you might notice that there's nothing that really matches up like those last couple problems we did, right? And that's okay, right? Whenever you have three times, you know, just like a variable, like x squared, just call it three x squared, right? There really is, like when you're doing these problems out, three x squared is really three times x squared. It's that little hidden bit of multiplication in there that we don't usually write, right? Another way to think about it is that in front of that x squared in there, there is a little invisible one, right? So you do three times one is three, and the x squared just comes along for the ride, right? A couple different ways that you could do that. Moving on to this middle piece with that red arrow, we have three times positive two x, right? And notice that again, I said positive two, I grabbed that sign that came in front. So three times two is six, positive six, and then the x again just comes along for the ride. We don't want to forget about it. Right. And then last but not least, 3 times positive 6. It's going to give us positive 18. All right, nothing too fancy going on. All right, so all we did was we took that 3 and we multiplied it all the way through. All right, so again, try pausing here. Try out number 4. So if we gave it a go, right, I promise it's not going to hurt you. All right, so what we're going to do first is 5 times x squared. All right, similar to the last one, that's just going to give us 5x squared. Not too much exciting going on in that one. This middle piece here, 5 times 4x, so it's a positive 4, so we got 5 times 4 is 20. And then that x comes along for the ride as well. 
Last but not least, we have five times negative three, right? Again, make sure to grab that symbol in front of it. Five times negative three is negative 15. And that's it, we're done. It's the whole problem, <laughs> right? So then they do get a little bit trickier, right? Now we're gonna introduce some variables here. So what I'm gonna have you do is watch through, we'll talk through five together. I'm gonna have you try six, just like before, right? So for five, let's take a look. And if you wanted to follow along with six right as I go through it, it's perfectly fine. So negative three x times x squared. All right, so that negative three doesn't have anything to go with, so we're just gonna kinda pop it down there. And then as far as the x's are concerned, right, x times x squared will mean that I now have three x's, which I'm gonna call x to the third. Right, so negative three x to the third is what we want out of that. Then I'm gonna move on to this middle piece. It's negative three times negative seven. Right, again, grab that negative in front of the seven. Negative three times negative seven is positive 21, right? So we'll get a plus sign there with that 21. Then I'm taking a look at the x's. x times another x means that I'm gonna have x to the second power, x squared. And last but not least, negative three times one, right? It's gonna give us negative three, and then that x just comes along as well, right? So one step at a time, right? Don't take a look at these problems and be like, oh man, I need to jump straight to the answer, right? Do one little bit at a time. It's gonna be all right. So if you haven't yet, try out number six. If you did try out number six or you just did it now, right? Let's take a look. Five times negative two is negative 10. X times another X squared is gonna give us X to the third. In the middle here, five times eight is gonna give us plus 40, because it's positive 40 the x's will multiply and give us x squared. And last but not least, way over the side there, five times 12 will give us positive 60, and that x just comes along with us. And that's it, that's all we gotta do. We're just multiplying into there. Big fancy distribution. Ooh, and then we get to ones where there's x squared. Weird, All right? Let's take a look. So again, I'm gonna talk through seven. If you'd like to try number eight as we're going, then that's okay, right? So first up, 3x squared times 2x squared. So 3 and 2 go together, right? So 3 times 2 is 6. And then x squared times another x squared, right? So if there's 2 in each of those, right, then altogether I have x to the fourth, right? Four x's all multiplying. So middle piece here, 3 times 20 is going to give us 60. x squared times a third x is going to give us exactly that, x to the third. And then last but not least, we got 3x squared times 12, right? So 3 times 12 is 36. And then those x squareds come along with us, right? Don't forget about them. That's, this is no Kevin McAllister in Home Alone, right? Macaulay Culkin would be so disappointed in us. All right, so if you haven't tried it yet, try out number eight. If you're not sure who Macaulay Culkin is, look him up. Star of Home Alone, Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, and other wonderful films. So number eight, right? First off, 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. x squared times x squared is x to the 4th. Middle piece, 6 times 5 is 30. x squared times another x is x to the 3rd. And then 6 times negative 30 is going to give us negative 180. And we got to bring those x squareds along. Right? And then that's it. So... Even a little tougher, right? These ones have two variables that are floating around in them. So x squared, y squared. Right? So again, I'm going to talk through 9. It's pretty similar to 10. Try it out if you want to keep following along like that. So x squared, y squared times x squared. Right? So there's no numbers, so I don't need anything out like way in the front. I'm going to take a look at the x's. If I have x squared times another x squared, I'm going to have x to the fourth, just like on the last couple we were doing. The only difference with this one is that now I also have a y squared that I'm going to just have to bring along. All right. Let's take a look at the middle there, right? Now, again, this is kind of one where we don't have a number way out in front. So what do I do with that 2? Right? So remember, in front of this x squared, y squared at the beginning, it's 1 x squared, y squared. So you could think about it as 1 times 2 is going to give us 2. And then you move on to the variables. So then we have x squared times another x is going to give us x to the third. 
Those Y squares don't have anything to do, so they're just going to come along with us. And last but not least, right? One times one is just one, right? So we could put a one there. Um, as we know, a lot of times when you just have a one like that, we might end up getting rid of it, right? Like it's pretty optional to actually put it down, but either way is fine. And then as far as the x squared and y squared go, there's nothing to multiply with them, so we just bring them along with us. All right. So hopefully, you know, some of you try it out number 10 as we were going. If not, pause here and try it out now. And then let's take a look together. All right, so 3xy times 2x squared. So 3 times 2 is 6. When you multiply the x's, now you've got 3x's, so x to the third. And then that y comes along. All right middle piece there, right? Well, we're doing 3xy times 2xy. So 3 times 2 is going to give us 6. The x's, right? x times x is x squared. y times y is y squared. And then last but not least, way over at the end, 3xy times y squared. All right, so again, remember that there is technically a little 1 in there. So 3 times that 1 is going to give us 3. The x doesn't have anything to multiply with, so I just bring it along. And then that y times that y squared is y to the third. Right? So hopefully this doesn't seem super duper bad, right? Like I'm not going to say like, oh yeah, it's so much fun, right? But it's just fancy distribution, right? We're taking the pieces that seem like they multiply together and multiplying those pieces together, right? And then other than that, it's just a matter of kind of keeping track of things, right? Making sure you bring everything along that should be. All right, so on the back of this, what I'd like you to do, there is an activity where it has the original expressions and the expanded expressions, right? So it's a couple problems where, you know, you're trying to see, like, all right, did they do this correctly or not, right? So what I want you to do is take the ones in the original expression, right, and I'll kind of, <laughs> I've already got it done down. So all these ones where it says original expressions, right, try those out. See what you get as answers. And then see if it, how it compares to those expanded expressions over to the side. I am going to zoom back out and give you the answers on them. All right, so, first one, they didn't do it right, right? It seems like they added in some addition that wasn't supposed to be there, right? It's just one monomial times one other monomial, right? This whole big chunk in the parentheses in that first one is all one term. So we don't know where those plus signs came from, but that's not correct. For that second one there, right, that one did come out right, right? That's, that's the answer they were supposed to get. Um, as I'm thinking about it, I'm actually going to write out what the correct answers are for these incorrect ones. All right, so if you got that answer that I just wrote for that first one, then that's good. You did it correctly. It does not match what they had over on the right-hand side. That third one was correct as well. Ain't right? nothing wrong there. On that fourth one, it doesn't seem like they distributed correctly, right? They did 7xy times 2x to the third y. Right? But then they didn't carry that through to distribute to the rest. Right? So your answer should be something like this. 14x to the 4th y squared minus 35x squared y to the 6th plus 7x to the 3rd y squared. Right? So if you got that, then you did it right more correctly than they did over on the right-hand side there. And then that last one was correct, right? If that one with the fractions gave you a little bit of trouble, that's okay. Fractions are tough, right? They're not very easy. If you remember some of what we were doing with fractions in the past, then that's not a bad thing either, right? So, we got one last little bit to talk about, right? You might be looking ahead a little bit and being like, what the heck is that, right? So, this is actually another more visual way to figure out what the answers to these types of problems are. So if you don't like it, you don't have to use it, right? But what I'd ask is that you just kind of hear me out as we talk it through, and we'll see what we end up with. So if I wanted to write a polynomial to represent the area of the entire rectangle, right, blues and greens together, right, then what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take a look at what each part is representing. So let's take a look at this side first, right? I've got two x's there, right? So all it's going to represent is exactly that. 2x, <laughs> right? If I have x plus another x, that's two x's, right? Thinking about what the top side would represent, right? There's one, two, three, four, five x's, and then three more. So let's write it out that way. Five x's, and then add three, right? One plus one plus one. So what you can think about is it's kind of like putting little plus signs in between 
all of this and then just combining the like terms, right? Up top there, if I had all five of these x's, one, two, three, four, five, and all three of these ones, right? That's exactly where I can get five x's plus three, right? So if I was going to write out the polynomial that represents that entire rectangle, right, I could do it as two x times five x plus three, right? Um, you could put the 2x in parentheses as well, right? That's probably, like, the safer bet is to put both of them in parentheses. The only difference is that on this one, 2x is just a single term. The parentheses are kind of optional here. So then, again, we can do this problem out one of two ways. When we've got it all drawn out like this, you know, it's going to come out with the same answer as doing it our normal way that we've been doing. So let's take a look at the normal way, right, over on the right-hand side. 2x times 5x. Right, 2 times 5 is 10, x times x is x squared. After that, we're going to do 2x times 3. 2 times 3 is 6, and then the x comes along for the ride. So what I want you to take a look at now, right, and I'm going to choose a different color so it hopefully pops out a little bit more. I'm going to use this, like, nice salmon color. If I've got 10 x squareds, right, let's take a look back at the rectangle on the left. i got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... 9, 10 x squareds there, right? So that's one way that I could figure that one out. Right, as far as these 6 x's go, right, again, over to the side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 x's, right? So again, if you think about it, like, combining like terms, I had 10 x squareds in blue, 6 regular old x's with the, with the green boxes there, and we can get our answer that way. Right, so again, you don't have to like the, doing it this way, right? If you prefer the way on the right, that's perfectly fine. I prefer it that way. But if it makes more sense to you to think about it like these boxes, that's an okay way to do it as well. Right? So what I'd like you to do is I'm going to leave that last one up there. I want you to try and come up with the polynomial that represents this and then see what you get for an answer. Right? Do it either way that you want to. So if you gave it a go. Right, over here on the on the side, it's x plus 1 plus 1. So that's x plus 2. Right? It's 1x and then 2 more. Up top there, right again, if you think about it, like adding, if I have 3x's all added together, that's exactly that, 3x. Right, so off to the side of here, I'm now going to have x plus 2 times 3x. Right? And you might notice that that looks a little strange when I write it that way, correct? So what you can do is if you ever have a monomial, right? I've got this 3x that's just a single term by itself. You can put that in front of the other one, right? And then it'll look a little bit more familiar, right? We're not actually doing anything different. We're just writing it a different way so it seems a little easier to us. So then again, either way that I do this problem out, whether with the boxes or with this fancy distributing, right? I'm going to find that that black arrow is going to give me 3x squared. 3x times 2 is 6x. Oops, let me color code. <laughs> I've been doing so good so far. Right? And again, if you did it out in the in the boxes, those 6x's, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right? And then those 3x squared, 1, 2, 3. Right? So you can get to that answer either way. Neither one is really better than the other. I would say that the boxes probably take a little longer to write out, but again, use what works for you. All right, so this is hopefully a, a short video. I didn't actually time myself, but I'm going to let you go for now. If you have any questions, please be sure to ask about it, right? It's okay to ask. There are a lot of, a lot of things going on in these lessons, right? But as for now, I'm going to say see you later.